now we will discuss about the lateral compartment of leg part 1 in this section we will discuss about the muscle of this compartment so here is leg and this is transverse sections of the transverse section of the leg in this diagram you can see this is tibia bone this is tibia this is fibula skin then superficial fascia then deep fascia this is deep fascia and this deep fascia here forms anterior intermuscular septum here is posterior intermuscular septum here is introsseous membrane this is introsseous membrane and by this division it is divided into three compartments this is anterior compartment this is posterior compartment and this is lateral compartment so today we will discuss about the lateral compartment boundary of the lateral compartment anteriorly by anterior intermuscular septum posteriorly by posterior intermuscular septum and medially by lateral surface of fibula and laterally by deep fascia and content of this here you will find two muscles these are two muscles present in this region this is peroneus peroneus brevis and this is peroneus longus peroneus longus so these are two muscles present in lateral compartment and nerve of this compartment is superficial peroneal nerve this is superficial peroneal nerve this is a branch of common peroneal nerve. here another modification of deep fascia in lateral region you find here this is posterior border of the fibula posterior border of uh, lateral malleolus of the fibula this is lateral malleolus this is posterior border and here is calcaneum from here to here fibrous band is present this is known as superior peroneal retinaculum this is superior peroneal retinaculum in this diagram here you can see this is peroneal trochlea this part is peroneal trochlea and here another band is present between the superior surface and lateral surface of the calcaneum this bone is calcaneum this is talus this is navicular cuboid lateral cuneiform medial cuneiform intermediate cuneiform and medial cuneiform this is fifth metatarsal this is fourth this is third this is second this is first metatarsal and these are phalanges so in this diagram here the inferior peroneal retinaculum is present this is inferior peroneal retinaculum here deep to superior peroneal retinaculum there is a space single space but here deep to inferior peroneal retinaculum the space is divided into two part superior and inferior superior and inferior part by this 
perineal trochlea. In middle, there is perineal trochlea. It's present by perineal trochlea. Trochlea, the space deep to inferior perineal retinaculum is divided into two parts: superior and inferior part. And in this diagram, you can see here, this is fifth beta tarsal, this is first beta tarsal, this is medial cuneiform, this is cuboidiform. Again, now this is head, here is neck of the femora, this is sight of the femora. And if you make a diagram, of this surface, this is lateral surface, like this, and this surface you can divide into three parts, upper one third, middle one third, and lower one third. And this middle one third is again divided into two parts, this part is anterior, and this part is posterior, anterior part, posterior. The same way, this is upper one third, here is middle one third, it is divided into two parts, anterior and posterior part. Now muscle attached with the anterior half of the middle one third and whole part of the lower one third of that surface. Here the muscle takes origin with peroneus brevis. This is peroneus brevis. It passes behind the lateral malleolus, then it passes deep to superior peroneal retinaculum, like this, deep to this, then it passes into upper compartment of space deep to inferior perineal retinaculum here and it, after passing deep to this it is inserted on here this part this is dorsal surface of base of fifth metatarsal it is inserted on here this is peroneus brevis, peroneus brevis, this muscle is this, peroneus brevis. Its action is eversion and plantar flexion, it is a powerful everter of the foot and it is a weak plantar flexor. And the muscle of this region is peroneus longus. So peroneus longus takes origin from upper one third of whole of lateral surface and posterior half of middle one third and some portion from head. So from these area this muscle takes origin. This muscle is peroneus longus. This is tendon of peroneus longus. This muscle passes, tendon of this muscle passes below the tendon of peroneus brevis and deep to superior peroneal retinaculum in a common seat. After this, it reaches into the inferior compartment deep to inferior peroneal retinaculum here. From here, it runs forward and just below that, this is cuboid bone. Cuboid bone has a groove on the inferior surface and a Osteofibrous tunnel is formed here. It is covered by fibrous tissue. 
this is osteophagus tunnel through which this tendon passes from lateral to medial side deep on the sole and here after reaching to the base of inferior surface of first metatarsal it is inserted here and also some part of it inserted into medial cuneiform and the inferior surface so these are the insertion point of the peroneus longus this is peroneus longus axis of the peroneus longus again it is uverter and plantar flexor it is powerful uverter and weak plantar flexor and also takes information of a sling with tibialis anterior muscle which support the arch of foot so there are two muscles origin and insertion and action of these muscles now we'll discuss in part 2 nerve supply of these muscles